State for the credits, guys. Lana Del Rey's cover of Season of the Witch is to die for. Sarah Bellows' book. When the stories write themselves and it all comes alive. Who came up with all this sick stuff? All right, boys and ghouls, strap in. I'm gonna delete that. No, I'm not. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is directed by Andre Uvredal, the director of one of my favorite recent horror movies, The Autopsy of Jane Doe. It stars Zoe Coletti and Michael Garza, and it's an adaptation of the short story anthologies that only 90s kids will remember. If any of you grew up in the 90s and had traumatic nightmares about these things when you were a child, <laughs> You probably read these books. Now imagine those images made flesh by Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> That's right, Papa Guillermo produced this movie. So not only do you have an absurdly talented horror director behind the wheel, but you also have one of the most creative visual minds in all of cinema working on it as well. So because of that, I was incredibly hyped for this movie. And honestly, for the most part, I think it delivered. What Scary Stories essentially is, is remember the Goosebumps movie from a couple years back? It's that, but elevated for a slightly older audience. This movie is a really great entry film to the genre. It's really good as baby's first horror movie. It's scary, but it's not too scary. And it's horrific, but still family friendly enough that you can take your kids to it and introduce them to the genre in a healthy way. I mean, that's ultimately who this movie was made for. It's for the new blood. It's for the new generation of horror fans. And it's meant to introduce them to the genre in the same way that my generation was introduced to the genre through the books. They'll only be slightly traumatized, I promise. On a purely visual level, this film is a marvel. The gorgeous production design, amazing cinematography, it all does really well not only to capture the Halloween spirit, but the spirit of the 60s as well when this movie takes place. It kind of offers the perfect fall aesthetic. It's the kind of movie I'd want to revisit and turn on once the leaves start changing and just sit down under a blanket with apple pie and watch. On top of that, the creature design is just a plus, but given that Del Toro's involved, that's not really a surprise. Each one of this movie's monsters manages to be both memorable and horrifying. And what I loved is that they each managed to have a sort of Del Toro flair to them, while still being wholly true and faithful to Stephen Gamble's original illustrations. The Pale Woman, Harold, and the Jangly Man were easily the standouts for me, and the former two there honestly looked like they just leapt right off the page. And The Jangly Man, the film's only real original monster, is so well designed and so creepy and really, really makes use of the fact that my boy Twisty Troy is playing him because this is a bendy monster and they make use of that and it's really wildly unsettling. His head is backwards for about 90% of the time he's on screen and it's good. This movie also gets away with a lot in spite of its rating. The red spot bit of the story, which by the way, if you're an arachnophobe, just don't see this movie. That bit genuinely had me wincing and tensing up and it's gross. And some of the other character deaths in this movie just come with these really horrifying implications. The Harold scene in particular, that scene is somehow 10 times more unsettling than anything we could have gotten with just some kind of gory spectacle. And for the people who are just entering into the genre, those scenes in particular and those deaths, they're really gonna freak you out. And a big part of that is just how well Andre Overedal directs tension and directs horror sequences. He takes all the techniques from Jane Doe and brings them over here, but kind of tones them down a little bit so that they're a little more kid-friendly while still being absolutely horrifying. This movie isn't really an anthology film, but at the same time it kind of is. Each story ends up kind of becoming its own little horror set piece while still being perfectly framed within the main narrative. I love that the main theme of this movie was essentially the power of mimetics and a, a, just a love letter to stories and the people who tell them. At its core, it's about the sheer power of an idea and the damage that that idea can cause. On top of that, Uvredal and Del Toro managed to capture this sort of nostalgic charm without just overtly jumping on the wagon of, hey, remember this? Something about this movie's aesthetic, its setting, its damn near perfect adaptations of Stephen Gamble's illustrations, the use of the Hearst song, it all comes together brilliantly in this cozy little family horror film that is just 
perfect for people who are trying to get their feet wet in the horror scene. And it's the exact kind of movie that I'm gonna want to revisit every Halloween. My biggest gripes with the movie were ultimately just those of some of the writing and the characterization. The supporting cast of the film were all fairly flat as far as their characters go. The performances were all fine with Zoe Coletti being the absolute standout of the bunch. Stella as a character is easily the most well-rounded of the bunch and has the most to do, and her story ties the most succinctly into the film's themes, although I do wish it was explored a little more. But for the rest of the characters, I do just wish they had a little more development. The characters of Augie and Ruth and Chuck are all just a little flat, with the most we really get to learn about them being their specific fears that will inevitably set up for how they die. And as a result, I found myself solely invested in their story sequences because I read the original books and was going, oh, I know this story, I know what's coming, oh boy. The character of Chuck specifically just flat out annoyed me. It's not the actor's fault, he did fine with what he was given, but what he was given was... Look, I'm not against humor in horror movies, I'm not. Hell, the movie I made is a straight-up horror comedy, but I hate awkward humor during horror movies. The sort of humor that Halloween 2018 had, which is a huge reason why I didn't like it. Oh, mother! Oh, man! I got peanut butter on my penis. I hate humor like that, and unfortunately for me, about 90% of the humor in this movie was exactly that. And of all of those bits of humor, 90% of them were coming from Chuck. Still, flat characters and awkward humor aside, I kind of dug the hell out of this movie. I love the Del Toro flair. It's a perfect melding of Del Toro's visual style with Andre Vredal's horror technique. And I think it worked out phenomenally. I'm gonna say that Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is solid. It captures the fall spirit perfectly, and I can't wait to make it a yearly rewatch a little closer to Halloween. Fun, scary, but not too scary, and overall just a really great family-friendly horror flick. Check it out. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, click down there, like, comment, subscribe. I have a Patreon link down in the description. If you want to help us make this channel grow and develop and make new, better quality content for you all to enjoy, I've got some really exciting stuff coming up in a couple months. Please consider donating. Even a dollar would help. I would really appreciate it. You could be like all of these cool people right here. But even if you don't, thank you so much for watching anyway. I really appreciate that, and I will see you all very soon. Thank you.